Welcome back to PG Chain Design. Today I would like to show you my little trick to get this really puffy elephant shape in just few commands. Are you ready? Let's get started. The key for getting this really puffy is you need to draw the form is really rounded to start with. If you have really, if you have any kink on it, then you may not get this really nice puffy shape. So let me starting from the scratch. I'm going to draw the body. You can kind of a freehand drawing if you want to to get some sort of a shape like this. If it doesn't look nice to you, you can go ahead to um, using the control point to edit, or you can draw the shape and kind of edit it, trim it, join together. If you are doing it that way, make sure that you need to rebuild the curve that you have. They have to be a single curve. That's a very important key there. The second thing is I'm going to draw the head. And since the head and the trump, this is a big curve coming back. So we are going to separate it into two pieces. So this is the head first. Again, we try to looking at something really bubblish uh, looking things and make sure they are single curve. So the, the key is they need to be single curve or you will need to um, rebuild it. Then I'm going to draw the trunk here and I'm here to freehand drawing, but you can do whatever you like to do. If you are again, trim and join, you have to rebuild them into one single curve. All right. This is apparently is a little bit too pointed there. We want to make sure that everything is nice and round. So I'm trying to use the gumball to drag uh, my design into more of the rounder shape. So try to eliminate all the possible angle that you have there to make it puffy base like this. Okay. All right. So that's it. You really like this one. Maybe I want those to be a little bit thicker just for the better casting result. And you also want to work on the size. Um, because if you're working on like large size and scale it down, always have a thickness problem. So always make sure that when you work on the jewelry, you want to work on the exact size. Okay. So now what we have here, we are going to come into the perspective and make sure they are flat. They should be, shouldn't be snapping to anything else. So first of all, let's go to the surface and we want to extrude the surface down like this. Okay, well, and then we are going to use this surface as our tool. I normally don't delete any curve, uh, but in this case, we don't need it. You can delete it or you can hide it. Okay, now the second thing we wanted to do is there are so many surface tool here. Uh, today, I'm going to use patch. I don't use patch that much is because the surface may not uh, the age may not be completely followed. But in this case, we want to make sure that they are pretty nice. Uh, to start with, it might be a little bit pinched there. Uh, we can change the stiffness to see if we can bump it up a little bit to make it not as pinched over there. All right. The more stiff number you have, you can see the uh, edge is not aligned. So, but that's okay because we are not going to use the surface underneath it. Okay, so that is one. We are going to do that for all three of them. Make sure when you are selecting the patch edges, you want to selecting um, not a curve, but the surface edges. All right, so let's give it a preview there. That one is really nice and puffy. Let's take a look on this one, preview it. Whenever you have a turn there, be watch out, they may be falling back to itself, okay? So now we have all the shape. We don't need the one on the bottom. Let's go ahead to use the uh, bowling tool to bowling it together. Now in Rhino 5, you may not able to do that, but Rhino 6, you can actually bowling the surface. All right, so now I have this. Uh, we want to take a look at the front view. You're going to notice that they are not 100% straight line, especially on the bottom because that patch things, but we're going to fix that later. Let's also go ahead to use the fitted edges. In Rhino 6, you can fit the edges with the 
uh, surface as well. Um, so let's try something like one. We want to fit it here. We also want to fit it here. And let's take a look on that. One, the parent is too big for this one. So let's fit it this one for one. And it looked nice to me. And we are going to fit it this one. But let's give it something a little bit smaller, 0.3 here. And we want to use that fitted. OK, all right, so if everything looks nice to you, we need to create in the thickness on this one. Notice that on the front view, the bottom is no longer flat, right? So we need to trim all of them at once. Let me draw a line over here. And for whatever height you want, but what I wanted to do is get this really close to the edge there. We just need to trim off that an even surface there. We don't need to trim off a lot, right? So that's using that line and using the trim command. I'm going to trim off here. And also, OK, that's great. Let's trim off all the way there. All right, so now we have this one. Let's go to use the duplicate edges while we are at the front view. And we want to duplicate the entire button. As you can see, there's an outline go all the way around. And then uh, we want to join those. And now let's go ahead to extrude this curve for whatever thickness that you want. OK. and. It is still open because there's a two different surfaces. So we are going to join it first, and then we are going to cap it. So now it is solid. Uh, we need to have an eye over there. So let's go ahead to just drop a ball or a sphere for whatever position that you think it will work there. And then we're simply just using Boolean difference, this one out of this one. And then we will have the eye there. But take a look on the rendering. Um, the rendering, the eye will look like it's, it's dead there. So we want to give it a better rendering by giving a fillet. Something really small, 0.2 may work. And that way it doesn't look like that. Or you want to go a little bit higher. Let's bump it up to 0.4. And then so it will get smoother there. All right, so then that will be that. I think my eye might be too deep. It looked like a ghost now. Uh, but that's OK. It's for the demonstration. Um, we want to make a jump ring here about this size. And we want to attach to the body. Sometimes I will make the jump ring just a little bit thicker. I'm not changing the size, but make them a little bit thicker. It's better for the casting. And let me move it in a little bit. All right, so this is a quick demo, but this is my uh, quick approach to make an elephant. Well, now I'm looking at it. It doesn't look really look like an elephant, but you know, I just want to show you my trick of how to get a puffy shape. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Whether you are a beginner or you are more advanced jewelry cat designer, there are three things you need to know to boost your jewelry cat design skill. I have a free webinar for you, and the link is in the description below. Hope you like it, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next.